Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 340. Anytime that you gravitate to something or you say, oh, this is my passion, it gets you deep inside, you have to be honest with yourself and don't suppress it. Just enjoy it and find a way to get that more into your life, whether it's through your work or just through your, your spare time. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and interior, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. 2015 marks Covercraft's 50th anniversary. They've manufactured premium quality exterior and interior covers here in the United States with a reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit with over 80,000 patterns and growing. You can choose from dozens of fabric options and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicle. Made in the USA, Covercraft is the right choice. I've protected my special rides with their covers for over 40 years, and you should too. Learn more today at Covercraft.com. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I am revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, Charles Bear. Charles, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I sure am. All right. It's great to have you here. Charles Bear is the founder and president of Cavo, where the mantra is, drive everything. It's a place where automotive enthusiasts have access to the most discerning driving experiences possible. His career history included nine years at Honda Motors in their R&D accessory division, and then he spent time at Packard in their Kenworth Design Studio. He earned his master's degree at the Foster School of Business and is taking his years of experience and passion for automobiles into the startup world where Kavok, he will provide membership that offers short-term leases to members who want to experience different marks so, as he says, they can drive everything. I love that slogan. So, Charles, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a moment and share a little bit more about this very unique business you're creating and your passion? for automobiles. Well, great. Thank you, Mark. And uh, let me first say thank you for having me on your show. You're uh, welcome. Big fan. So, <laughs> thank uh, you. <laughs> so yes, let's uh, let's get into it. Absolutely. So yes, uh, Kavok, it is a, I would say it's probably been about three years in the making, to be honest. Uh, it's one of those things that you sit around and when you're hanging out with your car buddies, having a coffee, watching the fancy cars drive by in front of you and Southern California, you think, oh, gee, you know, too bad we couldn't just swap cars. Too bad we couldn't just drive what we want. And so, you know, it's one of those things like, oh, wouldn't that be great? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Um, So as enthusiasts, you know, we are always thinking about ways to get behind the wheel of something better and something more interesting and something new. Over the years, being a designer, you're involved in the creationary stages of things where you think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to really mold the future and create the future and it's a fantastic role it's it's a wonderful role to be in but Mm -hmm. you realize too that you're always working on the front end of things you're working on the in the in the corporate world you're working away from actually the customers that are using the product and 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 live with the product and so through the years and through uh, some new education that i put myself through um a lot of business education might i add all of a sudden i had these kind of uh processes and pieces that i could put together to actually conceive the concept of kavoke in order to put together this abstract idea to get people to drive everything. You know, it's really, really cool, the whole idea, the whole concept, because I'm a car guy, obviously. Uh, Everybody (laughs) who listens to this show knows that. But we talked in our our pre-show chat a little bit about the name Kavok, and I'd love for you to share with our audience, because it is a very unique name. When I first saw it, I thought maybe it was an acronym. Uh, I wasn't quite sure. So tell us a little bit, where did the name come from? So Kavok, it just, uh, it was kind of a combination of a little bit of wordplay, a little bit of sit down and study and thinking of things that sound nice. Uh, honestly, a lot of companies, if you think about it, they make up names for cars that just have nice sounding names. And then all of a sudden they become something and nobody knows what a Camry is or what an Accord is, but or they sound an nice. Integra. Yeah. Integra yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And so I'm thinking, you know, well, you know, why do I have to name the company something uh, that is prosaic or something obvious? Let's call it something new, make a new word that sounds nice. And so I, I really like the word cavalcade. Uh, I like this idea of, you know, this uh, grouping of objects in motion. And that kind of felt like that's what we're doing. We're taking cars, we're putting everybody in motion. And then I wanted to evoke some emotion. So I'm thinking cavalcade, evoke, cavoke. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Very ingenious, very creative. Well, as we continue on your journey and learn more about what you're doing, learn a little bit more about you and cars, I always like to start with a <laughs> success quote. It's a saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. And it's a great way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars, yeah? So, Charles, take the wheel. Inspirational quotes. Now, I, I guess, I don't know, would it, would it reduce my, my equity to, to quote a Seinfeld episode? But, uh, you uh, know, I just, <laughs> I just did right there with that uh, comment about Integra because he did a little bit. And we mm -hmm. all know Jerry Seinfeld loves cars. So, uh, absolutely, well go for it. Yeah, uh, you know, and so it, it's funny. I mean, honestly, I do, I do think that oftentimes when you're stuck up against the wall, go watch some Seinfeld episodes. You'll find your way. <laughs> uh, but you know, I love this episode with with uh, George Costanza's father. He's screaming the word "Serenity now!" Oh, you know, yes. uh, "Serenity now!" Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's, uh, it's, you know, in all seriously, you know, if you go back to even like the the Serenity Prayer that people recite and. Um, and I think that there's a lot of, you know, power in that. And it's very simple, you know, accept things you can change or accept the things you cannot change to change the things you can and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, I think that's just uh, at, and pretty much any crossroads that you come to. If you dice things down in your life to that, I think you will find the right path. You know, I love that in so many ways, although I will caution everyone here because I remember during that episode, one of the lines was, serenity now, insanity later. <laughs> but I do, I know what you mean. I love that saying. I say that from time to time when I get a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great way to just put your hands up and ah, kind of let it out a little bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, Seinfeld is a, a fun one. <laughs> Would you share a story with me that instigated your passion for cars? You worked in the industrial design industry, design world four automotive companies, which is very cool. But is there a pivotal moment in your life when you really knew you were a car guy? Oh, yeah. You know, I I, uh, I think that uh, I think it's something that you're born with, to be honest. I think that as a very early age, you just you're just a car guy. Uh, I mean, I, I was in the backseat of dad's car as we drive down the freeway. I'm like, oh, there's a Buick and there's a Chevy and there's a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just learned to talk a year before that. And um, so it's just it's something that that as a car guy, you just, you always have. Uh, I think the struggle is always like, well, yeah, that's your passion, that's your interest, that's your, that's your inner self. But how do you work with it? How do you make money with it? How do you make a living with it? How do you parlay that into something that you can uh, you know, live life with? Right. And uh, most people make it a hobby, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a wonderful way to do it. But I, uh, I was lucky enough to stumble across this uh, this career of automotive design where you could kind of mix this passion of creativity the passion of you know drawing and inventing things with cars and um and once i found that i just knew like oh this is where i got to be this is just it checks all the boxes well you're very fortunate and that's why i love having you on the show because you fit the mantra the profile of cars yeah you figured out how to wrap your passion for cars into your vocation i've had Pretty much everybody who's been on this show has figured that out in one way or another. But you got to do the really cool things, and that was the design aspect of it. I think for a lot of us as we were little kids drawing on the back of our notebooks in class when we were supposed to be paying attention, we were drawing cars and engines and things <laughs> like that. So yeah. I, you got to carry forward and do it. So I think that's very cool. Charles, what I'd love to do now is crawl into the hood a little bit and... Take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and ask you to share a huge challenge or, or a great failure, something that's occurred along the way that, that you've really struggled with. Because the most important part of this, of course, has to do with sharing how you overcame it. And then what did it teach you? Um, I guess, you know, we've all dealt with challenges. I think we know. So, you know, I, I always tell people like when they ask a question like that, well, I'm like, you got to find your own personal challenge and then reflect on that as someone explains theirs. I think that life it's just going to keep throwing you throwing you new targets it's going to keep throwing you objects to to dodge i um 
uh, there's this you know expression like you know it can always get worse don't worry <laughs> uh you know it, yeah it can um so you know i always like oh how could it get any worse oh guess what yes so <laughs> another curve so, in the road <laughs> yeah yeah so so i definitely um you know i would say probably one of the the, the hardest things i've had to deal with uh in in, in just and it happened just recently was i, I lost my dad very suddenly oh my goodness uh, yeah, it was it was hard, you know. Um, he was a very healthy, happy guy, and um, and uh, all of a sudden, just you know, poof, dad's not there. And so, when you have someone that's kind of your your leader in your life, your direction, and has always given you that strength, then you all of a sudden you lose it. And this is right in the point when I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I need. I was starting this new company. I'm finishing up school. I'm doing some other things. I'm thinking, geez, I really could use that, you know, that guidance. And, right. Uh, and so it was, you know, it took a lot of soul searching to think, well, what would dad think of this? What would dad think of that? And, <laughs> uh, and you do, you do, you kind of start talking to yourself, but you're talking to your dad and you start realizing like, well, there are ways to, to live with people, whether they're present in your life or not. You live with, with what that guidance is. And that goes for anything. Um, you don't need to have someone in your face telling you what you need to do, but you need to find it in yourself and rehearse it in your own head and see what your next steps are just by clarity in your own self. Wow. Well, first and foremost, my condolences for your loss. I, very challenging, of course. And and also thank you for sharing a really personal story because there's a lot of listeners out there that are going through this, have gone through this. I have a, a good friend who just lost his son and, and his yeah. other son is a friend of mine as well. So he lost a brother. And so yeah. yeah, incredibly challenging times, and it, it makes all of us who still have our parents around really need to think about picking up the phone or going over there and visiting yep. them. And, and, you know, it's cliche, but it's very, very true. Enjoy them while you got them. That's what yeah, I said. Absolutely. So thank you for sharing that. Let's sure. let's shift gears here and go to the other end of the spectrum. I always like to ask my guests for one of those career aha moments, a time when the headlights come on and, and illuminate your way for that new idea, that new direction. And tell us the steps that you took to turn your aha moment into your success. Actually, the, my most recent aha moment was, was starting Kavoke, is to, to saying to myself, yeah, I'm going to get off the wheels, I'm going to get out of the, out of the race, and I'm just going to do my own, shift my own paradigm, so to speak. <laughs> there you go. You know, the pieces weren't all, the pieces were out on the table. Imagine a puzzle. It's all out on the table, but I just didn't see how I could put them together. Mm-hmm. And so you go through a lot. And, and going back to school in the last couple of years, it allowed me to kind of reboot in general on a lot of things. I mean, learning about business and and uh, and networking with a different mindset of people. It, it opens up uh, it opens up your your visibility on on how to do your passions. Mm-hmm. And so I was actually sitting in a class. It was an entrepreneurial class about for for my uh, for studies, and the the teacher starts talking about this and that and the other, and, they, and then all of a sudden we had a, a case on Tesla, and we started talking about cars. And I'm like, oh, business and cars, okay. <laughs> and and they were sitting there, and in the middle of the class, it's like it just clicked. You just I'm saying like, oh, well, that's how Tesla did it, or or that's how Zipcar did it. I'm like, oh, well, I can do it. Not that hard. No, I just and it it's it, literally you're just sitting in the middle of a classroom, and you have this kind of bright look on your face. I actually had someone saying, what are you smiling about? I'm like, I just figured it out. <laughs> I just figured it out. <laughs> so, yeah. So it sometimes it just happens when you don't realize it, but you do have to look for it. And then those moments hit. Yes. You know, it's a wonderful story you've shared just there because I think the puzzles, pieces of the puzzle on the table are a great metaphor for that concept of, of all the, the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, sidepreneurs, people who want to figure out a way to wrap their passion with cars into their careers or lives in uh, a better way, a different way, perhaps a way to create an income. And I think that's fantastic. It's all out there. You just have to sit down and start trying to put those pieces together. There's lots of things you can do. There's uh, books on it, people you can talk to. And of course, listening to inspirational stories like your yours is a great way to learn about it as well. That is very cool. I love that. How about proudest career moments? I would assume Throughout your career, the different things you've done and created, you've had many. But is there one in particular that stands out for you? Well, you know, and Mark, you know, we were talking about this, but you know, as a creative person, when you when it comes to things that you're thinking, well, I'm going to make something that hasn't existed before, and then 
put it out there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I, I was still rather young in my career and I got a tremendous opportunity to be able to do a show car for Acura. Wow. It wasn't a ground up show car. It was, a, it was a kind of a sports version of a, of a car, but it was a concept that we were trying to say, let's open up people's minds and see what they, what they can do with this. And, and um, I had a lot of great people guiding and helping and working on the team. I went to Japan and worked on it for a while. The Japanese came over and helped us work on it. And it was so successful in the development stages that Honda Motors in the U.S. actually said, you know what, we're going to show that car at a major auto show instead of a smaller show. Wow. And, and we thought, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And so you see this momentum and this excitement brewing behind this, you know, something that was just a sketch and a clay model just a few months earlier. <laughs> and and I, there's really, there's, um, there's nothing like the experience that when you, when you see the momentum behind something that you've kind of uh, start, lit the match, you know, you start the fire. And uh, into the day where that is shown to the public and you see people who've seen something for the first time that they've never seen before, and they want to ask you, like, how did you do that? And you think, how did I do that, honestly? <laughs> but there, that, is a, um, that is a very proud moment, I think, in any designer's life, is to just be able to put yourself out there and say, okay, here's what I did, and see the reactions on people's faces for the first time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've had many designers on Cars, yeah, and heard similar stories where things just were created from uh, literally the ground up, or they were something very simple. I had a guest that took the last of the Volkswagen Beetles and was asked to kind of spruce them up right before the <laughs> Golf came out. And so he had to take something that was that iconic and had to figure out, how do I make this kind of new and different for this mm -hmm. last year production? So uh, that was a great story. Wonderful. Where did the car end up going? Where did that design end up? Did it move past that phase? Well, it did. It did in, in different ways. And, and that's, it's kind of, it was a, it was a classic story of a concept that then had to go back into the engineering fields and the reality fields and and uh and something came up and that is actually where it was kind of more or less i'm not going to take credit for it but it was a lot of the inspiration for the acura tl type s oh okay and i think 2005 or six yeah. i think that yeah. came out. Uh -huh. because of the this this enthusiasm people showed for a, an acura sedan that could actually be more than than what they thought and and even though the the masters at at play they planned on a performance model from you know uh, much before the show car was being made it's still it's it's when you visualize something you see it you see the reactions that really gets the corporate juices flowing and they say yeah let's try to do something that captures that so very cool i love it great story let's have a little bit of fun here what was your first really special car it doesn't have to be your first car but the one that was really special for you and if you could share a memory you have with that vehicle yeah, I, you know, it's funny because it, I'm sure you get this a lot. A lot of guys say like, oh, geez, you know, this car was the greatest. It's definitely not the nicest car you ever had. <laughs> but it's something about like the first car that you choose for yourself, that you get for yourself. And that's a real a fun car. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, I was in my, my 20s, mid 20s. And I'm thinking, all right, that's it. I'm living in Southern California and I'm by the beach and I want to have a convertible. So I'm like, all right, but I also want to have something fun. And so I looked around and test drove a bunch of stuff, and I ended up buying myself an E36 M3. It was a 2000, no, not a 2000, sorry, a 99, I think. Uh -huh. 1999. Yeah. And this car, you know, was pre owned and everything, but not in the best shape, to be honest. But there was so much magnetism to that car. I mean, it, it literally, I've never driven a chick magnet <laughs> until I drove this car. And it's, and it's not like the, you know, the chauvinistic point of view. It's just people would come up to you and talk to you. You're in a convertible and they, oh, a nice car and this and that. And, and it was actually, it was a, it was a, it was a very fun social experiment to have a car like that and to be able to enjoy kind of just carefree and something fun to drive. So I definitely, um, yeah, definitely. That one's going to always have a, a place in my heart when I think about, you know, the cars that I've owned. And uh, yeah, I just loved it. Well, see, I, now I know where I blew it because I had an E36 M3, but I didn't have any chicks walking up to me. I, I, had, uh, I had a hard top. I should have bought the convertible. Geez, the convertible. Man. All of a sudden, you, I don't know. And, and some people, they told me, you know, you kind of look like a schmo in that thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but people seem to like it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I should have known you then. I would have. Well, actually, I was married then. Probably not a good idea. So let's move on from see, that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is there a vehicle that you've owned in the past that you let go that you really wish you had back in the garage? You know, this is just, you know, it's funny because there's a lot of cars I love, honestly. I've, I've gone through too many 
And and a lot of things you kind of just come to terms when you let it go. You're like, yeah, I had my time. That's good. There is one car, and I, and, I, and I hate to say it, and whenever I have an emotional attachment to something, that's when I say, uh-oh, then you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but uh, I inherited my grandfather's 1995 Lincoln Town Car. Oh, my gosh. Cartier edition, might I add. You know, Cartier? Ooh, yes. This ooh, thing la, la. was it was swanky in 1995. Oh, yeah. But, but, you know, over the years, I, 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 think I, I think I inherited that around 2007. And I, I had a good three or four years with that car, and it was I never had been laughed at more often, <laughs> joked about more often. I mean, it was like the kind of car you got to put a bag over your head when you drive it, because you know it's Grandpa's car. Sure. But I had such a secret love for that car, and I think it's just because of the times when I was a little kid riding around in the in the middle between Grandma and Grandpa in the front seat. Oh, you know? absolutely, it's a, yeah. It's just there's so many things that is related. The smells of the car would take me back ten years immediately, and. Uh, and so, you know, but after a while, I'm thinking, all right, gas is expensive, this and that, all these rational reasons. So, you know, I traded it up for a Volkswagen Golf, a GTI, <laughs> very nice Golf. Nice, but, yeah. But they're not a Lincoln. And so I've always regretted that. I always thought, you know what, for what I actually didn't, I didn't get much for that car. And that should have just been a monument to Grandpa all these years. Yeah, there you go. Great. <laughs> again, another great story that evolves not so much around the car, but the people. Mm -hmm. uh, associated with the car. That's why I think we love cars so much is it is really about the people. Yep. Is there a current project that you're working on right now there at Kavoke that you really are excited about that you can share with us? Yeah, well, Kavoke is it's getting all my attention now. So definitely. We are, uh, I say we in that it's kind of just a consortium of people right now. We are, we're still working on the formalities of, of the company. Mm -hmm. But uh, so right now, the goal is we're actually going to open up the first location in Southern California. Uh, a lot of our research has been telling us that that's where that's where the heart is. For people <laughs> that who makes just, sense. <laughs> drive a lot. And there's just, just such a nice market down there for it. Yeah. I do think that the West Coast in general is going to be our expansion plan. So right now we are looking at what kind of expansion we need, the rate of growth that we need to go at and how we're going to implement it and who's going to fund it. That's mm -hmm. always the funnest question. Of course. But, but it's tremendous how much uh, traction it has received from just a concept. Uh, we've been going at it for, I don't know, about three months now. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just pleased with the amount of kind of keep going, keep going attitude. Even from the financial sector, I'm getting a lot of like, okay, let us know when. And I'm thinking, okay, that, that's, those are great signs. I, I didn't think it'd be this easy, kind of I'm thinking to myself, so... So right now, I think that it's it's that in itself, just just working this new chasm of business within the automotive industry. It's 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 a fascinating journey, and I and I and I'm just I'm full into it. Yeah, spectacular, awesome. Now here's a very introspective question for you, Charles. If you were a car, what kind of car would you be, and why? <laughs> I love it. I think before the movie's cars came out, then it would be harder to visualize. But, yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm thinking, all right, what is the characteristics of cars and stuff? I'm like, well, I guess, you know, if I'd be honest, I'd say I'm a beat up old Chevy pickup, probably. But, <laughs> but you know, let's be more fun. That's okay. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I, you know, I, 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 if I'm thinking about characteristics, you know, and again, relating to how people interact with cars, I kind of would put myself like a Dodge Viper. Oh, okay. Uh, now that's a change from a old from pickup a truck. Pickup, yeah. yeah, still still big engine, but you know. The I guess you know I look at it like you know it it can yeah you know the Viper depending on who's driving it, it can either be rough and uncontrolled, and loud and hot. Otherwise, if it's the right person behind the wheel, you have a little more control and ability and engagement. Mm -hmm. So it just depending on. the you know, the interaction, I find that the Viper is, it's a little bit of a dual personality. And I, I've been told that often I, I am that way myself. So Very cool. You know, that's why I like that question. And just a few shows ago, we had the head of global design, Ralph Gilles, on the show <laughs> here of uh, Fiat Chrysler. And I think he's smiling right now if he's listening to this <laughs> show, because of course, uh, the Viper, he was involved in that program. So yep. very cool. I like that question. It brings out some very interesting answers. Yeah. So yeah. Charles up next is the last lap, but before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsor. Have you turned your key and heard that dreaded tick, 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 tick because of a dead battery? No worries. I've got the NOCO Genius Boost Jump Starter. This compact tool fits in your glove box and features rechargeable lithium battery technology that will start a dead battery in your car, boat, truck, or RV. 
It packs a whopping 12 volt, 400 amp starting power and can start up to 20 dead batteries on a single charge. Plus, it has built in spark proof technology with reverse polarity protection to safely jumpstart your vehicle. The compact, ergonomically designed clamps are solid copper for maximum conductivity, and there's a built in ultra bright dual LED flashlight with seven modes, including an SOS emergency strobe. It's easily rechargeable with a USB outlet, and you can charge your smartphone or tablet while you're on the road. Works on any 12 volt lead acid battery. The Genius Boost from NOCO is the ultimate emergency tool that's safe and easy to use. Quality design, state of the art technology from NOCO, your battery care source since 1914. Get yours at geniuschargers.com. Okay, Charles, we're entering the last lap, and this is where I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So, you ready? Sure, let's go. All right, here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? In very short comment, and the simply heard, keep the shiny side up. (laughs) Yes, and be careful. Be careful when you're out there on the road, absolutely. As I say, the throttle goes both ways. (laughs) (laughs) Would you share one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your success over the years? Yeah, to me... And it comes back to just, you know, how you live your life a little bit uh, in the big scale. But it's also just you got to do favors, whether they're small or big. It's about that personal connection that, you know, that the favor provides. It it, it gives someone a a reason to say, oh, well, this guy, I should do something either for him in the future or to think, oh, he actually does care. And you have to do genuine favors, too. Don't just do them to get stuff. But. I do believe in favors. I think that that's how the world goes around more than anything. Absolutely. First do unto others. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great way to go through life. Do you have a resource that you'd like to share with our Cars Yard listeners you think they would really enjoy? Resources, yes. There's so many. I um, know, I know. You know, and I'm going to give a broad resource, but it's more in a business, it's more in a practice. And that is like, if you know a designer, if you deal with a designer, or if you know of any access to a designer through a design school or or any other creative way, listen to them. That's my number one suggestion for anybody in business or anybody who's outside of the design field is stop and listen to a designer today. It'll change your mind, change your ways. Yeah. I love that. You know, I come from a design background. I mentioned to you my son who in our pre-show chat, my son is entering his senior year at RISD as an industrial designer. So uh, he's smiling right now as he's listening to this. <laughs> yeah, you'll listen to your son. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, now you got me in trouble. He's supposed Uh-oh. to listen to me. But no, if you listen to my show 300, you'll understand where Cars Yeah came from. I did listen to my son and Cars Yeah was born. So, yep, listen to your designer. Very important. Would you share a book, just one book that you think our listeners would really enjoy reading? You know, I think before this year, I would have said any Sid Mead book, just go and open up a Sid Mead book and immerse yourself in the, in the beauty and the art that this man has created. However, at this point, I would say a very good book that I came across recently in, in the development of Kavoke was a book called Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. Oh, yes. Guy Kawasaki. Awesome. Fantastic book. Yeah, great book. Listeners, I'll remind you that you can find this book in a great area on the Cars yeah website, Guest Recommended Books. This book and the past 300 and now 39 guests who've been on the show, all those books are listed there with easy access. But you can find all the resources that Charles was so kind to share with us today at carsyad.com slash Charles Bear. And his last name is spelled B-A-E-R. Or just put Charles in the search bar and his show notes page will pop right up. Do you have any interesting hobbies outside of your passion for cars, Charles? I love outdoor sports in general. It's always great to just be in touch with nature. Um, anything from hiking to skiing, you know, it's just it's just great. I'm always up for it. Um, big animal lover. Big animal lover. I mean, <laughs> dogs are just, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't live a life without having an animal around. So, you know, I, I think that you just got to, yeah, you got to have a hobby of kind of living your life and your passions. And, and even if it's cars only or if it's, uh, you know, something special like uh, a little furry animal that's your feet, you know. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, that just puts a smile on my face. Very nice. And you and I both live up here in the Pacific Northwest, so we have a lot of outdoor natural beauty to uh, enjoy up here, the, from skiing to the coastline to the sound. Yeah, it's a very beautiful yeah. place to live. It is. All right, we're up to the checkered flag. And Charles, this last question can be a real doozy. If you could only have one collector car in your garage, 
but you can't buy something or I'm not going to give you something that's real expensive that you can sell. So that little trick's off the table, but don't worry about the cost because today I'm going to write that check. What would that vehicle be? And more importantly, why? Well, you know, this is, a, again, it's a more of an emotional play, um, but it's also just a personal preference as well. Um, but uh, so I, I always heard these stories from my father of the last Corvette he had. He had several, mm -hmm. but it, this car was a very special car. It was a car he had when he you know, married to my mother, and it was a 1967 427 in Goodwood Green with a luggage interior. Uh, he bought it brand new off the showroom floor in Chicago. And um, this particular car had an L89 engine option, which was a very specific option for an all-aluminum head in that in that vehicle. And so, you know, I, was, I saw pictures of it, and I hear the stories of this car. And I'm just like, gosh, if I could get my hands on that car <laughs> oh, yeah. right now, it would never leave my side. So, yeah, definitely. Very nice. I love the backstory to that as well. That's great. <laughs> well, Charles, you've taken me on a great ride today, and I've really enjoyed learning more about Kavok and what you're up to. I want to thank you for sharing your journey with the Cars Yeah listeners and with me. Do you give us one parting piece of guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that 427 Corvette? Well, you know, it's a cliche to say, you know, follow your passions, but I could not express that anymore. I find that anytime that you gravitate to something or you say, oh, this is my passion. It gets you deep inside. You have to be honest with yourself and don't suppress it. Just enjoy it and find a way to get that more into your life, whether it's through your work or just through your, your spare time. You know, one of these old tricks that someone gave me once, it says, how do you know your passion? How do you figure it out? And they said, well, you know, this is an outdated example, but they say, you know, you go into the magazine rack and what's the first magazine you pick up? Mm. And that's a sure test. I mean, you're not going to, you know, pick up something that you're not interested in if you got all those other choices. So yes. that's my advice. Very well said. That's probably why I have subscriptions to 40 plus car magazines. So. <laughs> and that's when I look at all my magazines on the, the nightstand, the big stack there, my wife rolls her eyes at, I go, yep, everyone is a car magazine. So I guess I found it. So <laughs> great advice, my friend. I love it. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and what you're doing at Cavo? Well, for now, uh, we you know by by all means go to the website uh, www.cavoke.com, c a v o q dot com. Uh, there's a lot of information there about the company we're starting and uh, how it's going, and any new developments will be updated on that website. And uh, of course, you know uh, through uh, your lovely podcast here, Mark. So you know, <laughs> very cool. <laughs> I'll encourage our listeners. Please do go check this out. Beautiful website, by the way. I love the way it looks Thank and feels, and uh, definitely uh, up-to-date, timely, the way website design is happening these days. It's a really nice place to go visit. So listeners, again, you can find links to everything Charles has shared with us today at carsyad.com. Just put Charles in the search bar. His show notes page will pop up. And check it out and pay attention to what he's doing because when things get rolling here, and that is a pun, <laughs> uh, you'll be able to go have some fun and drive those cars of your dreams. I think it's a wonderful idea. Charles, thank you for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for sharing what you're doing with me and the listeners. Until we talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!